Jesus became a curse for us. Jesus became a curse for us. I would like to say that uh, Jesus would have died, if it was about to die and to shed blood, he would have died any kind of death. Hata angedungwa na kisu na mtu kwa barabara, sidamu badu ingemuagika. So angekufa kifo cha aina yeyote. But there was a death that was ordained for Jesus because of what he came to accomplish. Praise the name of the living God. Diposa alisema ya kwamba mwana wa adamu lazima asalitiwe. Lazima afe kama vile ilivyo andikwa. Jina bwana mpewe sifa. Remember ya kwamba kanisa limejengwa katika msingi wa mitume na manabii mitume wametupatia the new testament wale waliokuwa na Yesu wale waliotembelea na Yesu kama Paul wametupatia the new testament ambao tunatumia kama kanisa la sasa manabii ndio waliotabili kila kitu kabla hakijafanyika that is why when you read the book of Matthew writing to the Jews utaona mara nyingi akirudia so that it was fulfilled what was written by the prophet kwa sababu mambo haya yote kabla hayajafanyika in fact to me i say one of the strongest foundation of the church is a prophetic foundation when i understood the prophetic foundation i became so strong in my faith that i can take a bullet for my faith bwana siwe sana yani shaka iliondoka ah jina bwana ipewe sifa that is why wakati yesu alikutana na wale watu wawili kutoka Emao waliokuwa nauliza sasa tulikuwa tunafikiria huyu nabindi ambaye atakaye tusaidia sasa angalia amekufa Yesu alipokuja kwao ijapokuwa haku amemtambua aliwauliza nyinyi ni wajinga namna gani how foolish are you kuelewa yale yaliyoandikwa katika Torati na katika manabii ya kwamba mwana wa Adamu Razima angekufa kwa njia hiyo na baadaye afufuke. Kwa hivyo Yesu alikuwa anasema hii mambo yote imefanyika imefanyika kama vile ilivyo andikwa. So miaka mingi kabla Yesu hajakufa ilikuwa imeandikwa atasurubishwa katikati ya wezi wawili. Na wale watakao msurubisha watagawanya nguo zake. Praise the name of the living God. Haleluya ilikuwa imeandikwa atauzwa kwa fedha za 30 na Jeremiah. So it was just the unfolding of what was written by the prophets for hundreds of years. Na wale walioandika vile atakavyozaliwa ndio walioandika vile atakavyorudi. Sasa unawezaje kuwa na shaka kama vile ilivyokuwa ameandikwa atakufa atasurubishwa watagawanya nguo zake atauzwa kama ilifanyika exactly how can i doubt yeah. hata wakati alipochukuliwa malaika walisema huyu Yesu vile mnavyomuona ameenda hivyo hivyo lazima atarudi sasa naezaje kuwa na shaka praise the name of the living god the prophetic foundation is a very strong foundation some of the things that are written by daniel written in the by john in the book of revelation ya kwamba kuna wakati utafika hakuna kuuza hakuna kununua without a number uh, over 2000 years ago hakukuwa na id za kukuwa na pin number na mambo haya yote sasa hizi tunaona ya kwamba there are things that have come into the system praise the name of the living god ya kwamba leo ukitaka kuuza ama kununua kitu unaulizwa pin number yako iko wapi uh, jina bwana ipewe sifa haya mambo imekuwa mkutano na robi global warming jona akaandika akasema kuna wakati jua itafika itakuwa inachoma watu there will be change praise the name of the living god of weather some of these things are not changeable huh? the earth is aging praise the name of the living god and it is coming to an end 
and it's, there is very little we can do about it. The best we can do is to prepare for the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the living God. Hallelujah. Ni vizuri tujaribu kupanda miti, lakini lazima tujiandae. Bona pesa. Kwa unajua ukizeeka hata ukule muti vita meningapi, bado unazeeka tu. <laughs> bwana bwana sifa sana. Hallelujah. You can age gracefully. Jina bwana ipewe sifa, lakini ukweli ni ya kwamba unafanya nini? Unazeeka. Sasa turudi kwa kifo cha Yesu ndio tuweze pia kupata nafasi ya kuomba ni ya kwamba Yesu hangekufa kifo cha aina nyingine lazima angesurubishwa msalabani the bible says in the book of galatians chapter 3 and verse 13 galatians chapter 3 we can begin there verse 13 christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us for it is written cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree Cursed is everyone who is, does what? Hung on a tree. Let us also take verse 14. He redeemed us in order that the blessing given to Abraham might come to the Gentiles through Christ Jesus so that by faith we might receive the promise of the Na hiyo ni very important hapo imeandikwa so that by faith we might receive the promise of them bwana apoe sifa so katika kacha ya wayahudi na wakati ule yani kusurubishwa afadhali ungekufa kifo kingine lakini kufa kifo cha msalaba ha? kilikuwa ni kifo cha criminals watu wabaya so ilikuwa ni laana wewe kuwa ya kwamba kile kifo ambacho utakufa unawekwa kwa msalaba juu watu wanapita ha? na unajua mahali Yesu alisurubishwa ilikuwa ni makutano ya njia mahali watu wanapita wanakuangalia umewekwa juu ilikuwa ni raana kufa kifo cha aina ile but it was ordained for Jesus to die that kind of a death so that he might become a curse for us so that we may be redeemed from the curse the bible says in galatians the curse of the law remember as much as we did not live in the law of moses there is a law of our god the law that began in the garden of eden if you read in the book of genesis chapter 3 from verse 17 we can read genesis 3:17 to 19 Genesis chapter 3 from verse 17 the bible says uh, to adam he said because you listened to your wife and ate from the tree about which i commanded you you must not eat of it cast is a ground because of you what happens when there is a curse through painful toil you will eat of it all the days of your life it will produce thorns and thistles for you and you will eat the plants of the field by the sweat of your blow you'll eat your food until you return to the ground since from it you are taken for the dust you are to dust you return hapa tunaona siku nyingi kabla ya sheria ya Musa tayari Mungu alikuwa amenena laana wakati alimuondoa Adam pale katika shamba la Edeni laana ni nini akas is being means that you are removed from the presence of God and all his benefits a curse means that you are removed from the presence of God. In fact, when the Bible says when you eat this fruit, when Adam was told when you eat this fruit you shall die, uh, the word used here also means uh, separation from God. It was a spiritual death because Adam when he sinned, uh, he was separated 
from who from god praise the name of the living god and so when adam was removed uh, from the presence of god uh, he also lost uh, all the benefits praise the name of the living god and that is why the bible says in psalms 103 uh, from verse 2 psalms 103 and verse 2 the bible talks about the benefits uh, after the forgiveness of sin praise the lord O my soul and forget not all his benefits uh, how do we receive the benefits who forgives uh, all your sins and heals all your diseases that means after the forgiveness uh, then uh, there is healing then uh, the benefits are restored praise the name of the living god that is why i say that, that sin uh, is the greatest enemy of man and it is your greatest enemy today if you want to destroy your divine destiny engage in sin if you want to abort uh, your seed of greatness and engage in sin but if you want to manifest the greatness that you carry live a holy life learn from sin like joseph learn away from potiphar's wives bwana sifuwe sana so imambo ya laana imeneno wa sana na kwa hivyo ni vizuri kujaribu kufafanua ni laana ni nini wakati tunasema kuna laana juu ya maisha yako kuna laana juu ya hii jamii kunaweza kuwa na laana hata juu ya muji laana inamaanisha nini praise the name of the living god lazima tuelewe number 1 ya kwamba life is spiritual the bible says that the things that we see they were created from the things that we do not see or from the spirit realm that means it is a spirit realm from hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3 that created the physical realm so the spirit realm is more powerful than the physical realm by faith we understand that the universe was formed at god's command so that what is seen was not made out of what is visible praise the name of the living god nikupe mfano moja kama wakati paul anasema ya kwamba i am what i am by the grace of god can you be able to see the grace no but you can be able to see the effects of grace so when somebody is blessed it is a spiritual dimension in his life that enables them to succeed and when we say there is a curse upon somebody it is a spiritual dimension upon that person that causes them to fail we can say that it's like a spiritual programming praise the name of the living god in your life a curse programs you spiritually that it doesn't matter the effort it doesn't matter the labor it doesn't matter the skill you are bound to fail mahali kuna rana hata mtu asome hata mtu aweke bidii hata ufanye kile wengine wanafanya na wanafauru you are programmed to fail and that is what we see in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 uh, from verse 1 bibi naongea juu ya baraka na vile ukiti utabalikiwa katika kila kitu if you fully obey the lord your god and carefully follow his commands i give you today the lord your god will set you high above all the nations on earth all these blessings will come upon you and accompany you if you obey the lord your god you will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country the fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock the calves of your hand the lambs of your of your frocks that means uh, the blessing programs you to succeed in everything you do it doesn't matter you are in the city or you are in the village god can cause you to succeed anywhere but when there is a curse jump to verse 15 of the same deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 15 the bible says uh, he, however if you do not obey the lord your god and do not carefully follow all his commands and decrees i am giving you today all these curses will come upon you and overtake you look at this you'll be cast in the city and cast in the country your basket your needing trough uh, trough will be cast 
The fruit of your womb will be cast uh, and the crops of your land and the calves of your hands uh, and the lambs uh, of your flocks. And it continues. Praise the name of the living God. So it's like when there is a curse upon you, you are programmed to fail. In the spirit, there is a spiritual programming. Praise the name of the living God. You know, this is a computer technology generation. And you understand about programming. And you understand that there are softwares that helps uh, a computer to function in a certain way, depending on the software programs. So even your life is able to, pro to, to function in a certain way, depending on the spiritual programs that are at work in your life. And a curse is a spiritual program. A blessing is a spiritual program. So when there is a curse upon somebody's life, they are programmed to fail. So when Adam was driven out of the garden of Eden, he was told, there is a curse upon you. The land is not going to produce. Praise the name of the living God. You are going to be eating through the bro of your sweat. The land is going to produce thorns and thistles. That means even the fruits of the land, praise the name of the living God, will struggle to produce. That is when the, why the men of uh, the city went to Elisha. And they told Elisha, Oh man of God, come to our city. Because our city physically is well situated. But because of the curse that was spoken by Joshua, there was death in the city. The city was barren. It was not fruitful. Why? Because when the curse was released, it programmed the city to fail or to be unproductive. So when there is a curse upon somebody's life, they may put a lot of effort. They may do an elephant's work, but they receive an ant's reward or salary. Kazi ni andovu, mushara ni wamuchwa. Bidi ni kubwa, lakini hakuna kitu cha kuonyesha na ile kazi ambayo unafanya kwa sababu hakuna uwezo wa kukuwezesha kuzaa wakati baram aliitwa na barak aweze kuja kuarani wana wa israeli uh, the bible says in the book of numbers chapter 22 from verse 1 numbers 22 from verse 1 uh, let's lead from verse 1 up to around verse 6. Uh, then the Israelites traveled to the prince of Moab, camped along the Jordan, across from Jericho. Mm -hmm. Now Barak, son of Zippor, saw all that Israel had done. Look at this. Now Barak, son of Zippor, he saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites. He saw their success. And Moab was terrified. Because there were so many people, indeed, Moab was terrified with the dread because of the Israelites. The Moabites said to the elders of Midian, this horde is going to lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. So Barak, son of Zippor, was the king of Moab at that time. Sent messengers to summon Baram, son of Baal, who was at Pethor, near the river, in his native land. Barak said, a people has come out of Egypt. They cover the face of the land and have settled next to me. Look at the verse 6. Now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. Perhaps then I'll be able to defeat them and drive them out of the country. For I know that those you bless are blessed and those you curse are cursed. Look at this. Baram, Baram is saying, uh, Barak is saying, now come and put a curse on these people because they are too powerful for me. What will happen? Perhaps then I'll be able to defeat them and drive them out of the country. Kwa ufupi, Barak alikuwa nasema, ukiweka raana juu ya watu hawa, utawadhofisha. Utawafanya wawe dhaifu. Laana huwa inafanya maisha mtu inadhoofika inakosa mazao inakosa ukuu hata kama unabeba ukuu ndani yako inakosa ukuu ambao Mungu aliweka ndani yako so baram alikuwa anaitwa ili anene raana yani ni kumaanisha kwamba 
a program the children of Israel to failure. Praise the name of the living God. And it is a spiritual environment that is not conducive for success. So when Jesus died on the cross, he came to restore that conducive environment that can help you to rise and to become all that God wanted you to be. He came to raise that conducive environment for you to succeed. Praise the name of the living God. Atakama angayenu Mahali umezaliwa ilikuwa mbaya. Ilikuwa watu wanakaa wamedhofika, wanazaa mapoza kama kule Jericho. Mungu alikuja kuleta mwanawe Yesu Kristo kwa sababu anajua ya kwamba wakati Adam alitenda dhambi kuna kitu kiliondolewa ndani ya mwanadamu na ni uwezo wa kufauru bila kungangana na shida. So Mungu akafanya mwanawe Yesu afanyike raana ili aweze kuondoa hiyo hali ya kudhoofika na kushindwa na kungangana katika maisha yako. Praise the name of the living God. Nakumbuka ya kwamba Baram alikuwa aongee. Do you know many curses are spoken? Bwana asifiwe sana. You are programmed spiritually by the things that are spoken over your life. That is why the Bible says you shall refute every tongue that rises against you in judgment so that you can destroy every evil programming over your life. May every evil programming be destroyed because of the finished work of the cross. May God raise that kind of environment that can help you to succeed. By the way, it's good to mention who was Baram. Baram was a prophet who worked for money. Baramu alikuwa ni nabi ambaye alikuwa anafanya kazi kwa malipo. If you read in the book of Jude chapter 11, Jude has only one chapter. If you read chapter 11 of the book of Jude, utaona Baramu ni nani? Ndio wakati Mungu anataka kututumia kusiinuke watu wengine wawe kama Baramu, manabii wa kulipwa. Vile unavyowalipa ndivyo wanavyotabiri. Jude chapter 11. Jude verse 11, sorry. Yeah, the Bible says, Who to them? They have taken the way of Cain. They have lashed for profit into Baram's Ella. That means Baram was a prophet who was lashing or lashed for profit. Uh, they have been destroyed in Korah's rebellion. Praise the name of the living God. So, Nikumanisha, you could hire Baram akujia kutabilie. Na hiyo roho ya Baram iko siku ya leo. Kuna manabi wengi wakulipwa. Vile unavyo walipa, ndio wanavyo kutabilia. Praise the name of the living God. Ukitaka unabi mkubwa, unaandika check. Nabi akiona check, praise the name of the living God. Ndiyo wanatabili mambo makubwa. Ni roho ya Baram. Na lazima tuikatae katika jina la Yesu Kristo. Can somebody say we reject the spirit of Baram? In the mighty name of Jesus, in the church today, it is also written in the book of Second Peter, chapter two, and verse fifteen. Yani Baramu alikuwa ni nabi ambaye amejawa na tama ya feather. Second Peter, chapter two, and verse fifteen. Uh, na wakati mungu anataka kutumia watu ni vizuri wajichunge na hiyo roho. Uh, they have left the straight way and wandered off to follow the way of Baram, son of Beol who loved the wages of wickedness. So kile baramu walikuwa natafuta ni nini? Ni mushahara. Lakini ni mushahara wa uovu. Nina kuombea kwamba hata Mungu akikuinua hautafanyisha kipawa chako biashara. Praise the name of the living God. Hautafanyisha you are not going to merchandise the anointing. You are not going to merchandise the gift of God upon your life. Praise the name of the living God. Haleluya, na ili mungu akaweze kutumia vile ambavyo anataka. Ndiyo roho pia ili muingia gehazi. Gehazi akaona huyu nama na metabiliwa na ameweza kupokea uponyaji na anarudi na maliyote. Nae gehazi akasema apana, lazima tuachie malipo. 
praise the name of the living God. Lakini Elisha alikuwa anajua huyu nama na kiacha malipo hata tofautisha Mungu wa Israeli na miungu ya kwao ambayo lazima ipokee malipo. Freely you have been given, freely give. Praise the name of the living God. Kuna mikutano tutafanya hatutachukua hata sadaka kwa sababu we don't want to trade with the anointing. Praise the name of the living God. Unafanya mkutano, unabariki watu wa Mungu, lakini hata sadaka hauitishi. Bwana asifiwe sana. Haleluya. Sio kwa sababu hauhitaji pesa. Ha? sio kwa sababu ya Raisha hakuna mahali alichukua sadaka. Lakini kuna mahali unaangalia vile Mungu amefanya. Unaona hapa kuchukua pesa. People are going to mistake you. Praise the name of the living God with a business person who is trading with the grace of God who is trading with the anointing of God. Na kwa sababu Mungu anasema bado anataka kutumia taifa hili, si Mungu atuhurumie. Kwa sababu mimi nikiangalia taifa hili, naona tumewezwa na roho ya pesa na kutamani pesa. I remember when I was ordained, I was young. One of the prophetic words I was given in my ordination day my wife was reminding me the other day I think it was even yesterday ya kwamba one of the prophetic words was usiwe na roho ya kupenda pesa paka nilikuwa nauliza sasa unaniambia Mungu nisipende pesa hata ziko wapi sasa mtu hawezi hata kujilipia nyumba nguo kununua ni kungangana sasa unaniambia nisipende pesa hata ninaziona kweli Mungu alikuwa anajua siku moja zitakuja lakini nikombolewe na roho ya kupenda pesa especially unajua sisi kule tunatoka ah ni mahali ambapo sisi ni wafanyi biashara wakubwa ah inasemekana anga mkikuyu ukiona amekufa na hauna stethoscope angusha tu mashiringi hapo unaweza kuona ameamuka aseme ah ni mashiringi wacha nikufe tena kama ingekuwa ni pesa mingi ningefufuka <laughs> bwana asifiwe sana kwa hivyo ni vizuri hata kujijua Unajua hata ni mambo gani na kuranga watu wa kwenu. Si Paul aliambia Titus, "Wakrete ni waongo." Ha? And they are gratons. And they are evil liars. Evil brutes. So ni vizuri kujua mahali umetoka mko na roho gani ni ya kukura sana. Ndio wakati kama huu fasting ikifika unakuja mlimani. Unakaa unaondoka mahali ugali na nu Eh usiwe kama mwingine alikuwa amefunga akaenda kwa soko mahali madizi imewekwa alianza kukura tu akiwa ya sita ndio aliuma kidole akaulizwa na mwenye kuuza madini nini imefanyika hakumwambia ndio akabuka ah kama dizi ya sita ndio alijua nilikuwa fasting <laughs> eh? so please ni vizuri sometimes unajitenga unakuja hapa mahali ambapo hakuna ndio unaona tumeondoa majirani hapa karibu ndio hata wakipika ugali harufu ya ugali haifiki wapi aikufikii hapa praise the name na ndio tume consecrate mahali hapa so ukiona tunaangalia kama umebeba ugali kwa bag Usi, usione kama ni vibaya tunaondoa roho ya chakula hapa mlimani because the mountain has been consecrated for prayer and fasting praise the name of the living god na kuna watu bado huwa anajaribu kusinikisiki tu vitu ah uzuri ni ya kwamba Mungu anakuona hata hapo unakulia kwa blanket Mungu Mungu tu ako hapo na unaandikiwa kwa kitabu ya kwamba alikuja mlimani mahali pa kufuga na kuoba lakini alibeba chakula jina bwana ipesifa ninatangaza ya kwamba nguvu zote za laana hazina uwezo juu ya maisha yako kwa sababu ya kazi ya msaraba ambayo imekwisha na kwa hivyo ninachukua nguvu na mamlaka kupitia kazi ya msaraba i destroy that programming over your life in the name of Jesus uh, iwe ilinenwa na watu iwe ni kutoka jamii umezaliwa iwe ni mahali unafanyia kazi praise the name of the living god uh, kuna mahali unaweza kusikia watu wanasemanga hapa kanisa iwezi pita watu tano. hapa wafanyi biashara inafanyika hivi hapa kuna hii nataka kusema ya kwamba kama mwana wa Mungu hizo programming zote katika jina la Yesu Kristo hazina uwezo juu ya maisha yako kwa kazi iliyokwisha ya msara 
Baraba Nina Ziharibu in the mighty name of Jesus. Uh, the package of salvation uh, includes uh, the breaking of every curse uh, in the name of Jesus. Uh, where your life was programmed, Ya Kwamba Hauta Olewa, Nina Tangaza Uta Olewa. Where your life was programmed, Ya Kwamba Doa Haiwezi Kusimama, Na Ukae na muke Moja. I destroy those programming. Where your life was programmed, Ya Kwamba Ata Ukisoma, Hautwezi Kujisaidia, Hauwezi Kufauru. I destroy those programming in the mighty name of Jesus. I release your life in the mighty name of Jesus from every evil programming over your life. Kuanzia pare mwanzo, Adam aliweza kuraaniwa. Akaambiwa wewe, kazi yako utakuwa unaifanya na unakura kwa jasho. O oh, kama uko hapa na hakuna jambo huwa linakuja kwa urahisi katika maisha yako. Maisha yako ya mekua ya kungangana and you have nothing to show for later. I reverse that condition today. In the mighty name of Jesus, by the finished work of the cross, in the mighty name of Jesus, 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 in the mighty name of Jesus.